the cases that we had in a previous video, the one that is a um, sampler granulator thing, we can make a reverberation for a one shot sample. One shot is the most flexible one. Just by time stretching the granulated part, yeah, time stretching and modulating the parameters, yeah. And this is very flexible because we can do whatever we want to that granulated part, yeah. By itself, the acoustical one shot sample, whatever it will be, instead, it, it, yeah, except of uh, bowed and uh, wind instruments, the percussive things, usually will have. Uh, quasi exponential quasi exponential uh, decay so just by time stretching we have kind of a natural more or less uh, natural decay yeah but the thing is we can just multiply it by the envelope yeah and form the shape as we want more than that we can um, we can gate that thing yeah Using the same envelope, we can make it a bit shorter or uh, let the time stretching algorithm use the full length. Yeah, so and we will get something like this. Here's a snare. Um, come on, okay. And you can see that by time, time stretching, this is the reverberated signal. This is the, the reverberation. Yeah, I just time stretch it. Um, and uh, multiplied by the envelope so we can get well as long as we want yeah we, we can uh, here I put like eight seconds but it can be even more than that if we want that yeah. but I also can do gating here is the gating uh, grain gate control signal and then whoop. What is the frequency frequency this one is triggered server side yeah inside of the synth there is an impulse generator i will show it right now um so yeah gated reverb yeah uh, needed in lots of cases yeah and of course since we have a control over the curve um in envelope generator i can also make it something like this unnatural thing, you know, just and so on. Let's take a look at the code, some nuances there. And um, uh, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. uh, and I will show some some examples, some more examples. <coughs> so this part is basically same as it was uh, with the case of uh, granular effects in the previous one uh, it's the same thing here the difference is only that I don't use actual phaser uni generator here instead I use envelope generator why the name you can see the name is still phaser yeah but uh, <coughs> envelope generator actually generates the RAM so why a phaser is not that convenient when you want the ramp to play from zero to some value and then stay at that value. Uh, it will just loop again uh, and again, uh, that's what a phaser does. Um, so in order to stop at a certain value, you would have to play with rate probably and something like select a unit generator and so on. Uh, but with envelope, it's much simpler because we can launch the, ga the envelope generator by the, trig by the trigger uh, it, as in this case, it's an imp impulse unit generator. It launches the envelope. It starts from zero, goes to buff frames value, and stays at that value until we provide the next trigger. Yeah. The thing with this envelope generator, when you provide envelope through env.new, yeah, like this, mm, like for example this, yeah, yeah. But we can omit this thing. It, it will assume that you sh you're using new method. Uh, so, the first segment is what is called initial segment, yeah, and when you re-trigger that envelope then, it will start from the second value, not from the first one, yeah, so these are the le uh, levels, yeah, we start from zero, go to zero again, and then the next segment goes from that zero to buff frames, yeah, 
And the first segment, this is the duration. So the thing is, here I made some plot to, to show that. If we don't do that, then we get something like this. You can see the first segment, that's the initial segment. And then when you retrigger, it starts from the second one. Yeah. So if we want to retrigger it and make something like this, yeah. In our case, of course, it will be a line, yeah. And then, well, the rest is just simple. Uh, we go from zero to buff frames with this sample player, yeah. This is sh this should play the sample at default speed, like just as it's stored uh, on a hard drive, yeah, without any changes to that. Um, um, well, uh, as it assu as it's uh, assumed here, um, and then we should get in this amount of time. Yeah, which is buff, buff frames normalized to sample rate. So this will be the duration at which we should come to the end. Yeah, that's what we specify. We don't specify rate uh, like with phaser. We specify the duration. Okay, this is the way. Uh, but with the second one, which which controls the position um, position for every new grain here. Yeah, mm, we specify the grand duration. I specify the grand duration. Uh, you specify the grand duration. So uh, with the slider. So I don't even uh, connect it to the notion of how many frames we have in buffer. Just specify an arbitrary duration with the with, with the with the slider. Of course, this approach, like with retriggering the envelope, is not that usual thing, but my, it might be that you would like uh, some time to try that as well. Uh, in that case, probably instead of impulse, you would have something like in uh, at audio rate, and there would be some other synthesizer, yes, synthesis node that will make triggers, probably with demand rate union generators. So I just explained it in case. You, have, you would like to try something like that, but uh, if you don't, then you probably don't even have to uh, mm, bother because you will just play uh, the, f the initial segment, yeah? Yeah, okay, and you will put uh, something like uh, one here, yeah, or gate control here instead of the audio rate impulse generator. And in that case, if you will do it like that, like the, you will launch every synthesis node with synth object or pbind object, you will have to decide where should the done action be. Yeah, uh, this might be not that intuitive uh, because yeah, in most cases probably reverberated signal would be um, the longer one, so it's uh, better to put there the done action to free the synth, but. What if you're making a universal thing, you want not only to do reverberation, but something else as well. So there is a detect silence unit generator, which will just mm, watch out the, the, for the low levels in your signal and free the synth when the level will be, well, some average level will be lower than the value you specify. And the last thing here is that, well, two things, yeah, that envelope, that controls gating and the shape of the tail. Yeah, these two controls that I showed. Just a regular en envelope generator with perk here, uh, grandeur here, and uh, grandeur here as well. Yeah, the same duration control. But here it's scaled by that grain gate control. So if grain gate is less than one, then you, you will start to play with gating. The last thing is that with grain buff, uh, you don't have this loop control. The grain buff, if you have a position control with phaser or something and it goes beyond one, grain buff internally will loop that thing. It will wrap the value so it will start from zero. So again, another problem with mm, potential problem. Uh, when you made phaser not to loop, but it still loops for some reason, yeah. Because well, the the position value, the output value of that phaser became more than one. If you want to control that as well, there is a grain buff J unit generator in SC plugins package, uh, which has that control for the loop.
So let's take a look at some more examples. Then the first one that I showed before was the one with the uh, rate and uh, T frag, uh, the trigger frequency modulation. Those are the those are the parameters that I modulated. So where is that gate? Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look at some other some other methods. This is just a rate modulation. Yeah. Just by modulating rate we already can get something noisy. Here is without it. Yeah, just a comp filter effect. Okay, let's make it trigger a bit faster. Okay. And and the po position change rate modulation. Just a position change rate modulation. Roomy sound. Let's make it longer. Well, something unusual, yeah. Okay, another another uh, uh, flavor. Yeah, lots of flavors of reverberation can be uh, achieved this way. All the parameters at once. Something like room again. Yeah, make it make it bigger. Okay, what is this? Unnatural. Well looks same maybe it's the same thing I just post it no it's a bit different thing but okay something alike so I guess it's clear with uh, uh, one shots but what if we have uh, a phrase a musical phrase and uh, if we time stretch it then the every next note in a musical uh, phrase becomes delayed more and more and that's not reverberation yeah we will still have some uh, spatial feeling but it's not that cool effect on its own but we kind of stuck with that effect yeah let me show some examples here ah where is that here it is Ash. yeah here is the uh, uh, guitar sample You can see, yeah, the every next note becomes delayed more and more. And if the duration is bigger, yeah, different type of effect. Even though cool effect on its own, but not what we want. Ah, what's wrong with you? Play something. What? Sure. Oh, buffer, yeah. What, do, do I have a buffer control here? Yeah, I have a buffer control. That's why, why, why it freaks out. Okay, let me put that thing back. Yeah. So another example of what we can get this way. But what if we want to get a kind of a full-fledged uh, granulating reverberator with the feedback that we can not only use to process our sampled sound that we stored in memory and then we play with that thing but to also take an arbitrary input and granulate that thing so what's the idea behind this uh, here is the code it's a bit more modified of course uh the first thing first modulator stays the same but you can see that rate is now goes goes okay from negative to negative but it, it was another variant i was playing with this thing this is safer to go from zero to positive value and offset modulation the post rate position rate modulation position rate modulator the one he's he that we used previously and here as well position rate post rate mode is now called uh, offset mode yeah and also it goes from zero to positive value why because of how I calculate the delay time so 
my idea is that we have a buffer buff wr a unit generator that writes the values that comes to its input to the buffer yeah uh, using the phase uh, argument uh, in the same way as buffer d does yeah buffer d can also interpolate and so on yeah but this doesn't need to interpolate something it just takes a value and puts it uh, to the memory here is my idea we have a bu buffer yeah and on fingers <sighs> my old tradition the, the uh, Ali Krustam of school tradition uh, explain uh, things on fingers so here's a buffer and we have a play uh, we have a right head right head that's controlled by this buff WR that goes from zero to number of frames then jumps back to number of frames and, and so on yeah uh, it recursively overrides the buffer yeah removes what was in the current frame of the buffer and puts new value there and so on it goes like that uh, then there is a playhead which is a granulator granulator and the playhead is controlled by this pause um, pause argument of grain buff j class and uh, is contained in this contained in this read post variable so it follows that thing and reads that thing yeah if the rate of the granulator of every grain is the same and the post rate goes with the same speed as uh, uh, right post right right head then everything is cool we just read the buffer as it gets uh, right written written okay but of course that of course that's not the thing we, we want we also want to modulate the stuff and so on and that's why uh, my uh, modulators here go from uh, zero to positive value because after I just subtract them from the playhead value so playhead has some distance to the right head yeah and this distance uh, specify delay time delay time uh and then we just modulate it back and then back again yeah not back and forth but back to the if we will uh uh modulate it like that really like back then to the zero and forth and to the zero then after the right head there is a discontinuity there is always a discontinuity yeah because it just overrides what was there uh, we will face some noises and so on yeah and even more than that what i found by just like black box style analysis is that still also we have this for some reason 64 samples which is a control black uh, size um, minimum delay if i specify delay less than that then i start to hear lots of artifacts yeah so let's take a look again from top to bottom uh, three modulators mm, uh, two of those go from uh, zero to positive value uh, then the rate is subtracted from the actual rate value so we o I, I only do slow slower rate or lower pitch here yeah, or default rate which is equal to one uh, instead of the external buffer I just use a local buff because I will record all the time into it it's much more convenient uh, clear is also a good method to uh, ask um, yeah good method good message to ask uh, local buff so that if there is something in that memory chunk that you allocate it will clear that stuff um, then just a regular phaser uh, uh, for the right position and the interesting part this read position so i specify it as right position minus 64 samples <coughs> and as i said we need that let me show let me start from a clean configuration so here it is now offset offset here is the thing that specifies the delay time yeah here it goes here uh, so now it's equal to zero and 
and that means that we have minimum possible delay time. Uh, we have some feedback also. I will show the code a bit in just a minute. What happens if this is less than 64? Like, let's make it 63. 64 is my control block uh, size. And we get the delay, yeah? Very big delay, which is basically size of the buffer. And if I make it more obvious, like 30, for example, maybe, maybe that's an interesting thing by itself. But well, this is definitely uh, something, um, something uh, not uh, expected. But if you know what is that, let me know. I, I, I'm curious. I couldn't find uh, like the in anything in documentation. Uh, I was expected to be able to make a single sample feedback here, but uh, for some reason, there are unit generators that can do a single sample f feedback, like uh, those demand rate uh, writers and readers. Uh, but okay, that's what we have. Um, will probably also uh, be a good thing to make a video on single sample feedback for some stuff because a lot of stuff is uh, much uh, faster with uh, Faust I I if you know the language so okay I subtract those 64 samples then normalize it to the buffer uh, to the f number of frames in buffer because uh, green buff wants the range uh, position range to be from 0 to 1 uh, then I subtract this offset which is controlled by this uh, slider also goes from 0 to 1 and I subtract the modulator of course uh, good thing to do is to clip then uh, uh, this value so that if the offset minus uh, minus okay like, let's say like that offset plus the offset modulation might go beyond one yeah and in this case w w if we go backwards yeah the the, the playhead 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 uh, goes back reaches zero yeah we have to wrap it then yeah so that it will not go to negative values uh, it happens here yeah uh, we wrap it but then we exceed the range mm, the, the size of the buffer and we again face this discontinuity would get will get artifacts again the next thing is uh, hpf lpf high pass low pass for the granulated signal can also be used for the previous case uh, the input comes from in my case with sound in unit generator from this ardor door which loops over this small segment and then I just uh, write this to the buffer, granulate what's in the buffer, record that thing back, yeah, multiplied by the feedback, granulate again and again and again and so on. So we, this is a recursive granulator or also there is a name delay line granulator. Uh, the previous one was uh, that, that the, the one that was previous also called uh, sample based granulator S or sampling based granulator okay let's take a listen what we have here some examples piano good on piano let's take a piano example this is a piano reverberated signal yeah just a wet signal another one are these the different ones here yeah, these are the different yeah I just didn't launch it
the main source of adding uh, chaotic behavior to the now recursive comp filter that we will get by well with the just a periodic granulator uh, with this configuration is offset modulation of course yeah the bigger the offset the bigger is the delay time and thus the bigger is the virtual space yeah okay enough with this piano thing drum room yeah something like a drum room let's take a look at the drum sound okay this is a, a dry recording okay something like that uh, uh, bigger bigger what bigger echo Okay, what else? What else do we have? Why did I stop it? A bit bigger uh, than room, but with some rate modulation, I guess, yeah? No? But mm, we have some, some phasing, like chorus-like effect. Keep in mind that the, the most demanding CPU wise, the most demanding uh, parameter here is the overlap. Uh, so, so if you make a very big overlap, like, like this for example, it will not go beyond what specified uh, as a default value here, max grains uh, 500. Well, yeah, it will not go beyond that. If you go beyond that, it will start to post here that too many grains are gets generated. Like you want to generate too many grains. Uh, but already you can see now 37% of the CPU core. Yeah, and this is uh, like three and uh, half gigahertz uh, CPU core, I guess. So this is too much. Like feedback, uh, like 16 by 16 FDN will take less than that. So just keep in mind, keep, keep, keep an eye, keep an eye, keep, like, just keep an eye on this overlap parameter if you play with that thing. So, so that granulating process will not take too much. But with big overlap and small grain size, and small grain size we get when we make um, T frag very big. Yeah. Uh, now you can we we generate about three thousand um, grains per second. Yeah. And um, we get an uh, we get an overlap of hundred of those, yeah. I can make it even bigger, yeah. But again, watch out for the feedback. This way we can get very smooth reverb. So, if you want, but that might take. That might take uh, too much CPU. Too much CPU. Be not practical for some cases. Of course, if you just make a recording, you have a signal like this, then fed to a super collider where you want to, to generate granular reverberation. What's the problem? Okay, let it take like half of that CPU or even bigger. You recorded the the output and and you good. Yeah. So that's it. This is a, a delay line processor. It can be much more than then just a uh, reverberator we can do a lot of fancy things by the way there was an example somewhere here of uh, where are you let me show that uh, like uh, the the like if we play with rate a lot what we can get set yeah okay till that set thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I I now recall why why I did that positive range for this modulator yeah if we will make it positive <laughs> 
funky thing, uh, but uh, not uh, not very safe with this type of configuration. We also have to arrange some clipping here uh, so that if the offset is small, rate will not go uh, uh, too fast. Yeah, so that it will not f face the discontinuity in the buffer. Okay, enough with that. I guess I'm clear with this one. If there are some questions, just ask. Uh, then I will have uh, more ideas for further materials. And of course, we'll answer you uh, straight away. So, uh, here's a, just a small example before I will uh, finish with this one. Here's a small example. I take this uh, granulator, yeah, effect granulator. It's the same thing as MDF above. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing. Yeah, I just have the tongue here so that uh, if dynamic goes crazy um, there is some control some cheap control uh, and this is another example of microsound but uh, in the mm, synthesis side of things this is just an example from the very first video on this channel uh, on super musical design and super collider so if you didn't watch that and interested in what this thing does just go watch that one uh it's a uh, uh, pulsar synthesis pulsar synthesizer uh, that will generate some harmonic material then that material will go to this bus yeah and corresponding synth that granulator uh, synth uh, will receive the signal and granulate it and generate some uh, spatial reverberation like effects uh, what happens here is that the the routine routine starts the pattern yeah there are some seeds I was just playing a little and leave some seeds but probably they are not relevant for your code but nevertheless they are here <coughs> uh, <laughs> yeah so there is a P bind with some stuff it generates some harmonic material that material goes to the synth uh, the synth plays with this preset i wait for eight seconds with that default uh, argument set and then start to change the values using this uh, exponential and just the uniform uh, random number generators yeah just for fun and then i'll set settle down on some one some another one this is a small example of like how you can make um, uh, algorithmic composition but this is a very simple one yeah uh, I will talk on this those things also uh, in the future I now think about making videos on general compositional process like a production process organization with super collider using uh, Linux systems uh, Linux for for a reason I will explain that as well so I think now if the next one will be on some other topic uh, uh, in a microsound subject or something related to that because as I said uh, super collider uh, microsound microsound can be used to enrich any processing technique yeah so uh, but there are some techniques that I didn't touch in these videos so if I would like to talk about that more then I should show the simple one first that would probably take another video and then I would switch to a microsound example uh, which would take like another let's say 20 30 minutes <coughs> so I'm thinking if uh, the next one will be uh, on synthesis microsound way or dynamic range processing also on my mind or the midi based composition midi based midi based composition uh, midi based uh, compositional process because this is uh, uh, one of the questions that I get much more than anything from people like what is the good way or, or what is the way to organize the process of production process yeah 
how to organize the process of making music with Super Collider. Okay, there is a synth, there is a like a routine or p-bind or task, but how do you uh, make a song or something? Yeah, make, make a piece, musical piece. So there are three ways that I like and I would like to start with the first one, which is a very simple, I guess we can call it classic way. So this is uh, this is my plan for the future, but I don't know if I will start with that subject the next or some other ones. By the way, if you prefer something, tell me as well. So okay, uh, with this one, till next time, I hope that will be useful in your sound design. It's a very cool thing. I'm very uh, happy that I mm, um, designed something like this and I use it. Uh, I like to use that thing a lot. Um.